Stadiums have been many things to American spectators. A source of suspense. A scene of sublime jubilation. A shared experience where, well, you just had to be there. A cinematic set for many a sporting triumph. A simile for the scribes, penned or processed, spelling out the sagas of Saturday showdowns, Sunday spectacles, or the shining splendor of a fall Friday night. For others, stadiums have served as a sanctuary from the surging storm, a sacred setting for the searching soul longing to be free at last. A soundstage for the singer, songwriter, speechmaker, and bard. A sanctified section of sod where the honorable were honored, and their sacrifices securely sealed in society synapses. But most importantly, our stadiums represent a unique situation of security, a place in which the solitary soul finds shelter from the stressful street or a safe harbor for spouses, siblings, sons, and daughters. A most singular situation where time is simply suspended and all is right with the world. This program, developed by the American Clearinghouse for Educational Facilities and the National Center for Spectator Sports Safety and Security, explores the subject of stadium design and security, particularly those stadiums associated with educational facilities. ASAP brings an uh, uh, aspect of our continuous improvement cycle to the table, which we, we never had. Uh, the combination of uh, the subject matter expertise or the domain expertise coming from uh, NCS4 and the collaboration with ASEF is a, a, a beautiful marriage in the sense of uh, improving the industry. Since 9-11, the major changes or additions to stadium architecture have fallen into three main categories. First is the necessity to incorporate detection equipment, including cameras and gate design, into key perimeter and ticketing entrances. Second is the need to plan for more efficient egress from the facility and access to medical facilities or transportation in the event of an emergency. Third, though not strictly an architectural consideration, is the necessity of stadium security and design personnel to work effectively with other sources, local agencies, and national agencies, and even spectators. As you watch this program, look at these three main themes as they emerge and for the practical suggestions provided by our experts. Input has been provided by security experts from college campuses around the country. It's important for us to be a part of this project because of the uh, develop best practices, share information, also get the uh, information out that we do care. We do care about how facilities are constructed. Not only is our university an academic leader, but we also like to think that we're leaders in public safety practices. That's why it's valuable to participate in projects like this. Modern security, as it relates to stadium architecture, is an evolving science. But things have changed, particularly since 9-11, and will continue to do so. We've always had sports security. But since 9-11, uh, uh, with the support of Department of Homeland Security, classifying stadiums and, as, and arenas as soft targets, We've changed a lot in the way we do business. Most people think about from a design standpoint, they're looking at it from a uh, fan comfort standpoint. I think designing also, you need to think about it from a fan security standpoint. When we're looking at new developments or if we're looking at an upgrade to make sure that uh, the security, emergency management, and response personnel are at the table before we start putting a lot of pen to paper on designs to talk about any of the considerations that we would want to see in, in future design. It's critical. It's critical when you're evaluating the design of your stadium to be involved from the very beginning. The more input that you have in the design phase, the more input you're going to be able to provide for what the specific needs are that you're looking for for safety and security. Most of the older venues that were built prior to 
Crime prevention through environmental design didn't really exist. It wasn't a thought. Most architectural firms were not even aware of, of that uh, terminology, which has since changed after 9-11. So venues like Ohio Stadium that were built in 1922, we had to go back and redesign some things. Hiring design professionals who listen well, who not only get into the design quality and the design aspect, but actually get into your opera operation, who understand what you're trying to get done on a game day, to understand your unique nuances, um, that, that's, that's very important. Um, and again, I, I can't stress enough drawing in every aspect, every from, from gatekeepers, ticket takers, ushers, um, your, your law enforcement, your emergency management group, um, you know, every aspect of the venue uh, to, to draw them into the design process. So let's take a look at stadium design considerations in a post-9-11 America, keeping in mind that weather and crowd-related issues still play predominant roles in fan safety. We'll start at the perimeter and work our way inward. A lot of things can be done that are reasonably cheap uh, to implement just by using the geography around the stadium, by creating differences in grade and so forth, putting up seat walls and so forth. Those are low cost, but a very effective ways to limit vehicle penetration into your perimeter. It takes that vehicle access then to your, to your venue and restricts that down to a number of access points that you can control effectively that you can implement your screening on, that you can push all of that hopefully several hundred yards away from your venue. A primary consideration in stadium design is the position of the actual facility relative to the campus and particularly the stadium parking. Adequate standoff distance is always important. Entrance into designated parking areas provides the first opportunity for security personnel to observe and detect. Attention must be given to perimeter fencing and designated gates through which fans, vendors, and media must pass. Checkpoint buildings and storage areas for detection equipment may be incorporated into stadium entrances as well. There are things that, that you can uh, pick to use in your design, safety-wise and security-wise, that are architecturally pleasing and it doesn't make your venue look like a fortress. We're a college environment and, and we welcome fans and uh, both uh, our own and opposing fans and we, we've got to find ways to balance access to the stadium, particularly vehicular access to the stadium, with stadium security. Uh, it really doesn't do you a lot of good if someone's already been able to access your venue when you realize that there's a potential problem or something to look at. The other thing that I would suggest with closed circuit television is looking at expanding your buffer zone out away from your venue. You want to try to avoid those blind spots so you know you can have a complete 360 degree view around the venue. We want to make it very difficult for someone to get close to the stadium without somebody or something being able to see them. Some facilities, particularly those built long ago, have houses and businesses constructed literally right next to the stadium itself. This provides a security challenge, of course. Our facility started in the early 1920s and it started around 20,000 or so capacity and over the time it's had multiple additions to, to today where over 101,000 people sit come here. We were located in a field and now now we have a housing district around us, a cemetery on one side of us, so we're kind of bound and restricted for parking and then um, for uh, just normal in ingress and egress is a challenge for us. The challenge of this is we have a road that goes um, fairly close to the gate, so it's, it's difficult to really have the space to queue up and to separate the groups. The students come in separately of the general public and we have a different process for admitting them. So we really don't have the space to queue them up and really separate them that we would like to have. It's a difference between what was adequate space in 1989 when this road was put in and the needs of an expanded stadium with, with sellout crowds. In 89 we were probably getting maybe 25,000 people, now we're uh, 57,000 people. Parking lot design is also important to security and safety. 
consideration must be given to critical parking areas for media and medical vehicles and also for vendors delivery vehicles. Well you can do that in a number of ways. The first way that you can restrict vehicle access is you can set up uh, parameters upon which uh, all deliveries have to be in by a certain point before the before the venue opens. You really don't want venues, especially uh, a large deliveries coming into your venue uh, at the time that the game is going on. And in most cases, that's that's well within the acceptable um, means for what what vendors are trying to do. They can bring a lot of stuff on site and store that. Everything still gets screened. Everything is still inspected, but it is in the venue and has already been inspected. The venue is locked down then before the event ever starts. And then on those one or two exceptions, making sure that you have those control points, making sure that there's effective screening at those control points, and making sure that those control points are a reasonable distance away from the stadium to provide a sufficient buffer. As your, as your game draws more interest from the, from the media, it's important to realize that more media trucks are coming to your venue. And having a place where they can locate and not block the egress of the pedestrians as they're coming in and out of the stadium is very, very important. Um, the big 18-wheelers take a lot of space, so having considering where you might locate them, having hookups and connections for them so they can uh, fulfill their mission but still not be in, impede the people as they're coming and going is very, very important. Our primary focus with the media has been to designate one area for the media to come in that are going to the press box and one area for the media that are going down to field level. We make sure that everyone has uh, credentials before they're able to enter the venue and we want to try to, to limit that access area. Uh, one of our primary concerns has been uh, someone that supposedly had access being able to enter the stadium at a minimal checked area or a minimally checked area and so we've put a big emphasis on emergency vehicles, staff that are working and the media. Media access is very much like a regular gate for us. Um, so media typically will bring in a large amount of equipment whether it's a camera, uh, video cameras um, and things like that. I know some venues are actually having x-ray stations at, uh, at the media entrance but obviously bag and article check is as important if not more so than any other gate because of the scale of the equipment and the ability to uh, to hide a device within that equipment um, so and we man our media gate from a very early hour uh, to a very late hour so one of the other aspects I would say is critical for a media is to have the ability to have some level of egress after the stadiums locked down um, through emergency panic hardware uh, and, and have the doors lock and seal behind them. Um, we'll have media in our venue for four to six, sometimes even longer uh, hours after the event. Sometimes they'll watch other games, uh, they'll write their stories, so um, the media entrance and exit way is really kind of an important design feature. We have a number of things in place at Cal Field for delivery uh, access. Number one, before you can make any delivery, we need to know who you are. Uh, we need to know who the driver is and what the contact contents of the delivery are. They have to be regularly scheduled. Uh, they're turned away if they are not part of our, our uh, delivery uh, schedule. Um, I'll need to know uh, 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 government issued ID and name of the driver before they can come, plus we have the right to be able to inspect any vehicles that show up. Having physically the ability to move um, product from a loading dock which may be on the periphery into a storage area that's adjacent and then having smaller vehicles uh, sometimes just gators or, or other uh, smaller means to distribute that product through the venue is, is probably most appropriate. The other part about uh, delivery is that it starts in the perimeter. It's, it, you're not allowed off the street off of a public road until uh, we know that uh, you're part of our delivery schedules. Yeah, what we've done with the ambulance locations, we've tried to strategically place them in locations where it would be very easy for them to get out quickly. Uh, we have primary routes that are we're able to open. Uh, at game time we put blockades in place around the stadium to expand our buffer zone. So there's only certain designated areas where vehicles can get out. So we looked at placing the ambulances strategically. So that way we're fairly close regardless of where we need to get the patient to the ambulance at. We have chosen places that's easy for the ambulance to get to when transporting people out of the stadium and have easy access to major roads. Ticketing is an evolving science. 
from paper tickets to pass cards to wands, one factor remains consistent. Ticketing into the facility itself is a one-to-one -one experience, not only to verify legitimate access, but also to observe and detect. There is no replacement for human observers, but detection equipment is in a constant state of upgrade. Storage for this equipment at the stadium entrances and elsewhere must be factored in to stadium design consideration. It's important to embrace technology. An example of that is when we went to electronic ticketing, what we noticed is at our gates uh, to our stadium, uh, we had less of a backup in lines because it seemed to expedite getting people through the gates. You do have to look at each person that comes in. You have to scan each ticket. You may have to, to look at each bag that is brought in. If you're going to get people in and, and, and search for contraband, uh, you don't want them to be virtually beside the, the, the stands. When you do that, you'd like them to be uh, somewhat farther out. All of our ticketing is done with, with scanners that connect in through Wi-Fi. Um, so technology is a huge part of what we do. We uh, actually did a lot to improve the safety of the, of the facility. We moved the ticket exchange booths out. Uh, they're all wired with internet capability and power. So we've got computer systems for the card swipe inside those booths. And that card swipe and the ticket exchange happens in the same location. Really a pretty nice environment. Um, did this with a, a look to the future as well. Next year when the ticketing for the students actually enters both gate A and gate B, we'll take some of these booths over to the other side and have general patrons come in this side as well. A recommendation on entry gates would be to make sure that you push the entry gates far enough away from the stadium that you can do back screens and checks and so forth at the gate and still allow a sufficient buffer so that you ensure that any threat that would be intercepted at that gate remains several hundred feet away from the stadium and away from the venue. You need to have individual entry areas, but then uh, from an exit standpoint, if you have gates that can swing open, wide open to allow uh, the flow of people out, you're going to get everybody out uh, much more quickly. Cameras can provide an extra layer of observation at fan entry points. When we open gates, we're able to see what's happening, happening at each gate. Um, when they're coming in through the bowl and we have choke points, we, we focus cameras on those choke points so we can observe how we can dis deploy staff to address issues if they're, if they're arising. So you begin to know your facility, you begin to know your venue and where things are working well and where they, you need some support. And where you need support, it's, it's very beneficial to have uh, closed circuit TV coverage of those areas. We use our closed circuit uh, TV system, not only for public safety issues, but also our game management uses the cameras to monitor the gates. So if they see patrons uh, forming a long line there, and then they look at two or three gates away from there, that the, there's no people at all, they'll actually call down to the staff at the gates, the ticket takers, to uh, redirect people to other gates. The use of bollards and barricades to keep unwanted vehicles from the crowd in the stadium has become much more creative. Notice the planters and statuary at Kyle Field at Texas A&M. Even the statue named the 12th Man, in honor of fans, stands in protection of the actual 12th Man. We, we, like, the, we like the notion of, of the aesthetically pleasing, natural barriers, uh, things that don't look like you're surrounding it with barbed wire fence and vehicular bollards that would stop an army truck. Notice these baseball bollards. Most people would never know that they are part of elaborate security measures. The, the baseballs uh, look like uh, something that, that, that kids would love to see yeah. and, and, and yet they provide uh, a level of protection that works for in, in the setting that it's in. If you're starting from the ground floor up and you involve an architectural firm that is attuned to crime prevention through environmental design and have your public safety individuals plugged in from the ground floor up, you can design a venue that really maintains safety of the patrons and the facility itself and is also pleasing.